What's going on everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker, where the answers comes first, the reasons come last, but we're constantly and always still learning. Now you might notice that the lighting looks a little bit different from my normal lighting setup, and that's simply because today we're gonna find out which type of diffusion is gonna work for your Niwer 660 bicolor panel that I reviewed about a year and a half ago. And if you can correctly guess what which one I'm actually using, go ahead and leave your comment down below. I like to see how many of you guys can actually figure this out. So why am I doing this video? Basically, I've noticed that the Neewer 660 video is still quite popular and a lot of people are asking questions about, well, how do you diffuse it? Is that softbox going to work for me, the official square and round one? Or, you know, is this going to work for YouTube? What have you. This video is going to try to answer that for you, but I also think I might want to create like a Neewer 660 tutorial series playlist. So also leave that down below if you have further questions. So without further ado, let's talk about our four contenders of diffusion. First one up is just an umbrella soft diffusion. Basically your 660 is shooting right through it. To get two of these, it's only gonna cost you a little over $30. This is definitely the cheapest one to get soft light for your Neewer 660. Now the second and third one is the official Neewer soft boxes for the 660 series. We have the square version and then we have the larger circular version. These ones are going to basically latch right up onto your panel. You need to make sure your panel is set in the horizontal orientation so that you have full tilting access. And if you want to get two of these, you're looking at anywhere from approximately $70 to a little bit over $100. And the last fourth one up in the lineup is the traditional 5-in-1 reflector with a diffusion layer in the middle. Basically, you're going to be shooting the light through this. This is going to be the most expensive, going anywhere from $100 some dollars for just one setup to $200 some dollars for two setups. And that's simply because you're going to have to purchase some sort of light stand that's going to hold this 5-in-1 reflector in front of your light that's already on another stand. So this is definitely the more traditional way in terms of Hollywood wood having a much bigger diffusion layer and the light shining through it so this is also the most expensive before we get to the test results i want to make sure that you understand how i'm actually testing this and why i'm testing it this way so the LED panel themselves, I have the diffusion cover taken off. That way I have the most amount of light power shooting at the diffusion material. In terms of the camera I've chosen, I specifically chose the Sony ZV-1 for its small sensor, but I'm also purposely shooting at f2.8 instead of 1.8 at its widest aperture, and the ISO is only bumped up one stop over its base ISO. The reason I'm choosing this specific camera is because if it produces a desirable result for you, then you know if you're using a Micro Four Thirds, Super 35, full frame, and maybe you have a f2.8 lens, maybe it's a f1.8, f1.4, what have you, you know that your camera system is capable of getting the correct exposure for your actual shot. So without further ado, now let's get to the test results. Before we begin, this is the ambient conditions with the set camera settings. So as you can see, it's quite dark as I've pulled all the blinds. So let's look at the bare LED. With the bare LED, you can see that it illuminates my face just fine at 70%, and we do see a nice harsh shadow towards my chin, a nice very cut line. Next, we're going to move over to the square softbox, and this does alleviate that sharp shadow under my chin. We're actually still at 70%, and that's simply because I can move the light a little bit closer just out of frame. Next, we're going to move to the circular one. Looks pretty similar. We still see some nice soft shadows, and we did have to go up to 80% just because of how the light is being placed just out of frame. Next, we're going to go to the umbrella. We are shooting at 100%, and you can see that the shadow underneath my chin is very, very smooth, and we get some very nice soft light. Lastly, we're going to go to the 5-in-1 reflector here, and again, giving off a very nice, soft, and pleasant look because it is a much larger source, and we are shooting at 100%, and I did have to bump the ISO to 320. 
All right, here we have a direct comparison, but I'm giving you more of a three-piece lighting look. So I did add a Neewer 660 as my hair light off to the, my right shoulder, and then I used a Neewer 530 RGB to blast some color in the back. The left side is gonna stay bare LED as our control, as our right side is the diffusion options. So first up, we have the square softbox, and you can see it does alleviate that harsh shadow at my nose, my eyes, and my neck. Next, we have the circular softbox, and it more or less does exactly the same thing as the square softbox, maybe a slight difference, but otherwise the result is very similar between the two. Next up, we have the umbrella, and this is where we start to see a very big difference. Now the shadows is even softer as it blasts a very even light across my entire face, which is definitely great for YouTube and interview setups. Last but not least, we have the 5 m lector, and this one is tried and true. It gives us a nice, soft, pleasant look, probably just a hair softer than the umbrella, and it definitely gives a great look, again, for YouTube and interviews. For the diffusion versus diffusion test, I'm only going to be using the circular softbox, and that's simply because the square softbox gives more or less the same look. So here we go versus the umbrella. The umbrella is softer, and there's two key points to look at here. The first one is my cheeks and my forehead. On the circular softbox, you can see it pops out a little bit more than the umbrella, which doesn't necessarily look flattering. And then if you look at the shadow values underneath my chin, the umbrella is lighter than the circular softbox. Last but not least, if you're going to be looking at the price point, $45 versus $15, no question, the umbrella wins this and being the best value and giving you the softer light. So let's kick the circular softbox out of the equation and bring it down to the last two. Now the 5-in-1 reflector is definitely winning here because in comparison, now the cheeks and my forehead on the 5-in-1 reflector looks less poppy than the umbrella and same goes for the shadow value. However, if you look at the price point, there is a stark difference and with the 5-in-1 reflector, you have to set up another light stand just to hold the thing up. So when it comes down to it, I think the umbrella is definitely the clear winner here in terms of overall softness to the price ratio. So what's the bottom line here? And what is the takeaway from this diffusion test? Well, basically speaking, I'm very surprised with the umbrella coming in at the cheapest while also producing very nice, desirable results. And if you guessed that I'm using the umbrella for this demonstration, you are correct, congratulations. Now, one of the questions you guys might have is why are all these soft boxes or diffusion methods giving such different results with the same LED panel? Well, the reason is, essentially speaking, if you have the LED panel here, the diffusion layer here, the closer it is, you're only illuminating a very small amount of the actual diffusion material and more light is going to be piercing through. Whereas the umbrella, you actually have the ability to extend that range so that the light is beaming out and it's basically illuminating a much larger part of the surface before it actually reaches to the person's face. That's in a nutshell why this uh, umbrella is giving you a much more diffused look versus the official softboxes. Now, the one cool thing is let's take a look at the umbrella versus the 5-in-1 reflector, which is like way, way more expensive for a dual setup. And yes, you can see they are different but in terms of the overall softness, they're not terribly far apart for this specific shot. So the long story here is the TLDR is go for the umbrella. It's the cheapest and it's gonna give you more or less a nice pleasing look. Now, who is this for exactly? Because I do get a lot of questions of, can I use the Neewer 660 for a music video? Could I use it for YouTube, what have you? So here's what I'm, here's what I'm saying. Specifically speaking, if you're going to be doing soft light, this shot you're currently seeing, approximately a medium shot, is as comfortable as I am to recommend in terms of your composition. Because if you're going to be going back further away, these lights are probably not going to be powerful enough for what you want um, in terms of illuminating the person as well as creating not such a harsh shadow. So I would say this is what you're looking at, which means YouTubers, you're totally fine. Gaming channels, you're totally fine. If you're doing some corporate interviews where they're sitting and looking this way, you're totally fine. Uh, narrative films, same thing. This is the shot that I'm comfortable suggesting in terms of where the output um, is capable of exposing everything. 
Now, if you are doing portraits, I have heard people ask, are these good enough for portraits? Again, if you're trying to go for the soft light on a portrait, assuming that the model is literally sitting there and they don't move, you might be fine just because the shutter speed is going to be maybe around 1 100th one or maybe a little bit faster depending on your lens. And again, portrait shot just like this. Further back, going to get some harsh shadows. If you're doing product videography and photography, this is perfectly fine because the light is going to be pretty close to the subject. And in terms of photographers, you have the ability to lower that shutter speed put it on a tripod to get your exposure, and therefore um, this will do the job. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about is sort of miscellaneous stuff, but it is important. So, in all these tests, I was specifically using the daylight LEDs only at 5600K. If you're in a pinch and you need more power, go ahead and turn it to 4400K, change your white balance of your camera, and you should be getting approximately an extra two thirds stop of extra light. So that's handy for you if you're in a pinch. Now, there are some newer versions of the 660, sort of. In terms of the bicolor version, we have the lensed version, which is what I have, the 2.0 gigahertz, and then we have the SMD version. The only main difference here is that the SMD is gonna give you a flood beam versus the lensed version, which is gonna give you sort of a spot beam. Now, is this gonna make a big difference? Not necessarily, but here is how I would use it. The SMD version, I would probably use it to light up the umbrella as it's gonna give me a more uniform look on the umbrella, but as you saw, the spot beam version still did pretty well. So it's up to you on which one you would wanna use. If you're gonna be using the five in one reflector and shooting the light through it, I would use the lensed version because you're trying to aim that light at the disc, whereas the flood beam is gonna go all over the place and you're gonna lose a little bit of that directionness of lighting up the diffusion material. So there's that. The other new version is the 660 RGB Pro version. Is the Pro version gonna be brighter than the bicolor version? Most likely not because you're, um, they're not gonna have as many LED diodes on that version, but they do say it's brighter than the original 660 RGB. And hey, that is it for this tutorial video, everyone, and I really hope that this helps you give you a better idea of what you can do with the 660s. Now, if you wanna purchase any of this diffusion stuff, I have it all linked down below. These are affiliated, so should you make a purchase, I might make some commission off of it, which does help support this channel. If you wanna see some more 660 content, go ahead and leave your questions and comments down below. I will read them and get to them as fast as I can. And until then, like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you guys in the next one.